All right, good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday. I'm Jenny McCollum, the Chief Procurement Officer for JEA and the Chair of the Awards Committee. I'd like to call the August 12th, 2021 awards meeting to order. We do have a quorum uh, with Joe Arfano, Stephen Datz, and Hai Vu present on site and in the room. And then we have Ricky Erickson and Laura Dutton remotely via WebEx. We also have OGC represented by David, David Miggett, and then budget is represented by Lori Whitmer. Before we get started, I'll ask if there's any public comment in the room or anything that came in via email before the meeting started. No public comment. Great. Is there anybody on the call that would like to make a public comment in regards to the agenda for August 12th? All right, seeing none, we will start reviewing our agenda. We have items one through six, and they've all been reviewed by procurement and by budget and are ready for the awards committee review. What we'll do is we will uh, roll call, or I'll go through each award individually. We'll ask for any comments or questions from the awards committee members. I'll ask for a motion and a second to approve, and then we'll roll call individually through the members for their approval. We'll start with the meeting minutes from August 5th, 2021. Are there any comments or questions? All right, seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from August 5th. Joe Arfano, so moved. Laura Dutton. <laughs> Laura Dutton, second. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Joe and Laura. I will roll call through the committee to approve the August 5th, 2021 meeting minutes, starting with Joe Arfano. Approved. Laura Dutton. Approved. Ricky Erickson. Approved. Stephen Datt. Approved. And Hai Vu. Approved. All right, award number two, this is a request for proposal. This is for our dental insurance plan, which is self-insured by the JEA employees. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is to fully insure dental coverage, network access, and service to the JEA employees. Um, Metropolitan Life Insurance Company is our recommended awardee in the amount of $1,347 are $47,874.20. We have this set up as a one year with four optional one year renewals. We received six proposals and we utilized our uh, benefits uh, broker Gallagher to help us uh, administer and evaluate the RFP in compliance with the JEA purchasing requirements. Um, Gallagher provided a dental cost comparison, um, which we also have attached as backup. And when we compare the price between the current contract and the new contract, um, it's resulted in an estimated about 9% um, savings over the one year, so about 130,000 um, for the JEA employees. And then I'll note that MetLife offered a rate guarantee of two years. Um, and then for years three and four, we would have negotiations, but they would be capped at 5%. And then in the fifth, fifth year, uh, further negotiations, if we would like to utilize that last renewal. Uh, but if the rates we find, they aren't capped, but if we find that they are not reasonable, JEA will rebid those services. Uh, and those negotiations happen uh, fairly early in uh, year four. And so we would have plenty of time for, for us to rebid if we couldn't get through the negotiation process. So I'm gonna pause there. We've got Ann um, with Gallagher on the line. And I just, Ann, is there anything I might've forgotten or anything you wanna add to the comments? No, Jenny, thank you. Good morning, everyone. No, that pretty much recaps it. This is a, um, it's a very standard process, if you will, for public entities when we go out for procurement through the RFP process. And we were very pleased that we had six, although one did not really comply, but we did have five very viable options to review for JEA's dental plan. So we were very pleased. 
Thank you. We appreciate y'all's support and help on that. Any other questions or comments from the awards committee members? Uh, Jenny, this is Carl Becker. A couple couple points. Oh, hey, Carl. Uh, how are you doing? Sure. Yeah. Uh, with the actual uh, summary on top, this is actually a fully insured. It's not self insured. <clears throat> Just so FYI, and you, you nailed it with, by saying that this is 100% paid by the employee. So just uh, FYI on that. And one other good thing with regards to what, what uh, Gallagher, I uh, mean, Ann mentioned, and with the help of uh, Don Fleming, what we have is a uh, good news story is actually the rates. I know it's 9%, but when we kind of bring them back to 2000, more than 2019 levels, that's a, that's a really good news story and guaranteeing it for two years. And so uh, great job on that. And just kind of pointing that out when you, when you start thinking about the numbers now. <clears throat> Thanks, Carl. Great, great addition. Thank you. So, Jenny, any other this comments? Is, this is Hi Vu. Just a quick question: um, How do we come up with the number of employees? And, 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 you know, is that based on the current uh, sign up for dental plans? Yes. Yes. I'll let Anne add anything else if she wants to clarify that yes. further. Thank you so much. When we start this process, before we go out to the marketplace, we receive a a current census, if you will. So although we don't know who is going to sign up for dental upon open enrollment, we can rest assured that the fluctuation is very minimal. So therefore we use the current enrollment numbers, if you will, when we go out to the market. And then we also obviously use those same numbers to identify and compare each of the bids that comes in so that it's consistent across the board. But yes, those were identified with current dental enrollment numbers. Thank you. You're welcome. Any and other you, questions? Very, very good, yeah, very good question. Hi, is that bit, uh, the actual, what Anne's adding to that is, it's a factor of credibility, and I can, Anne can uh, add to this, is that even with the actual enrollments we have, not everybody enrolling, still the numbers that we have for enrollment is credible for determining um, a good Rep representation of the, the dental expenses. That's correct, Carl. Thank you, Carl and Ann. Any other questions from the committee members? All right, I'll ask for a motion to approve award number two. Hi, Lou, so moved. Even that second. Thank you. We'll roll call through the committee to approve award number two, starting with Haizu. Approved. Stephen Datz. Approved. Joe Arfano. Approved. Laura Dutton. Approved. And Ricky Erickson. Approved. Wonderful. All right. If everyone can just make sure they're on mute for me. We'll move to award number three. This is an invitation for bid. This is Consolidated River Town Water Treatment Plant Project. And this is for the uh, production or the water treatment plant production and backup well drilling, as well as constructing the wells and associated pipes and site work for the River Town Water Treatment Plant. Williams Industrial. Services LLC is our recommended awardee. And this is quite a large project at uh, $14,697,198.63. We are expecting this project to be completed in May of 2023. And we had good competition on this one. We had four different bids received. Um, and when we review the award amount with our budget estimate, we're looking at about 3.5% lower than what we were estimating. Uh, and I'll just note some of the differences between the estimate and the bid were attributed to uh, management and administration efficiencies and resulting cost, cost savings by consolidating two construction contracts together. So part one, the well drilling contract, and part two, the water treatment plant, wellhead, mechanical, and pipe installation contracts. So put those two together uh, for, for one implementation. 
I will pause there and ask the committee if there are any questions or comments. All right, I'll ask for a motion to approve award number three. Stephen, that that so motion. You, Laura, you have a question? Nope, just a jumping in to motion, but Stephen can take it. Okay, Stephen, I heard a motion from Stephen and Laura, perfect. Um, we'll roll call through the committee to approve award number three, starting with Stephen Datt. Approved. Laura Dutton. Approved. Ricky Erickson. Approved. Hi Vu. Approved. And Joe Arfano. Approved. Award number four, this is a miscellaneous, so this is what we would call our um, developer agreement project. This is for Rivertown parcel number one. Uh, this is about 900 linear feet of 20 inch reclaimed water main, 400 linear feet of four inch sewer force main and a JEA duplex pump station. Uh, we have an agreement with a developer, uh, which is W. RH Longleaf LLC, and the low bid um, is going to Marietta Sands Corporation, and the amount of the award is uh, $699,821.83. We are expecting this to be completed in November of 2021. And I'll note with the developer agreement, so we've got the you know, it's a Rivertown developer utility service agreement um, that dates back to December of 20 or 2004. Um, and then a partial assignment and assumption of the service agreement, which happened in May of 2021. So we put these developer agreements together and then work with them um, when needed uh, to, if we want to increase sizes, you know, outside of our specs or whatever they would normally be um, required to to install if we want to upgrade. And if I said any of that wrong, Deanna, please, please correct me. Um, but when we are looking at this, yes, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so for the developer agreements for Rivertown, it's not actually based on if we want something upsized. Um, that was an overall um, backbone infrastructure for it. Um, but otherwise, everything okay. else, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, and then I'll just note that um, we had two bids received. We got two no bids, but um, ultimately Marietta Sands Corporation be is the lowest bidder. I'll just note too that they are the current contractor on this development, and so their mobilization costs are gonna be lower, um, which helps them from a bidding perspective. So it looks like it's about 13% lower than our award estimate. Deanna, do you have anything else to add that I might have missed? No, I think you covered it all. Okay. I'll ask if there are any questions or comments from the awards committee. All right, can I get a motion to approve award number four? I have it, so moved. Joe, if I'm a second. Thank you. We'll roll call through the committee to approve award number four, starting with Hai Vu. Approved. Joe Arfano. Approved. Um, Stephen Datz. Approved. Laura Dutton. Approved. And Ricky Erickson. Approved. Thank you. Award number five, this is a renewal. Um, and also, uh, we'll call this a contract increase. Um, this is for FY22 HP equipment purchases. Um, CDW Government LLC is the awardee in the amount of $1,986,548.96. So we are utilizing the one-year renewal option that we do have, but I'll note that we are doing a contract increase for an additional purpose in FY21 for about 560,000 and then which is included in that award amount and then the one year renewal amount is about 1.4 um, 
we are still getting the discount that HP, um, that CDW is offering. It's between 47 and 63% discount off list price, uh, and the first year support is included. So the same contractual discounts uh, on any additional related HP equipment not specifically listed in our attached pricing sheet. So across the board, we'll put what we believe we need for the year, but if there's anything that comes up, we also will get that discount pricing on anything else. So the original award does allow for the purchase of additional equipment not specifically listed. And um, I'll note that the estimate for FY22 is significantly higher than FY21 um, due to the specific inclusion of HPE three-par storage purchases. And that's about um, 930,000 and then the HPE uh, Simplis, simpli, I don't know how uh, you're going to catch me on that, but it's, thank you, environment, uh, which is about 428,000. So these items we previously purchased um, either through like an existing GSA contract um, or through single bids, and by including them here, we're going to save about 50%. So we wanted to include it in this renewal option. So that's why it's a lot, uh, much higher than when we first came to you guys for the FY21. So I'm gonna stop there and see if you guys have questions or comments. Just All right, to, I will ask. Just, Jenny, this is high, we just wanted to confirm. We are expecting uh, over, $500,000 of equipment purchase and delivery by the end of this fiscal year. Yeah, correct. I didn't hear that, but I think Stephen answered uh, it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just confirming that we are expecting uh, purchase and delivery of over half a million dollars of equipment, and Stephen confirmed. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All right, I'll ask for a motion to approve award number five. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give this one to Laura. Laura I'll gets the first either. motion. <laughs> <laughs> and then Haibu will be our second. Uh, roll call through the committee to approve award number five, starting with Laura Dutton. Approved. Ricky Erickson. Approved. Hi, Vu. Approved. Joe Arfano. Approved. And Stephen Dett. Approved. Thank you. Our last award is award number six. This is a change order. This is for on-road residential electrification program and strategy. And the main purpose is increasing JEA's net revenue through the electrification efforts. Um, so this is a residential residential electric vehicle program that yields a positive return and investment to our utility. Sagewell Inc. is the recommended awardee, and the award amount is $23,386. I'll give you guys some background. This will be the first time you've seen this because this was an informal award before, um, but we did advertise this in December of 2020. We had 10 responses. Um, the, we evaluated it on price, past performance, professional staff experience, design approach and work plan, and revenue potential. Uh, the request for this um, is for additional funds uh, to, for, to add incentives to our customers enrolled in the charging rebate uh, to be launched before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, the C2M migration enables the rebates to be processed, but with the rescheduling of the completion of that project, um, we are requesting a change order to have Sagewell implement that for us um, since C2M is not going to be ready before the end of this fiscal year to be able to incorporate that. So just to give you guys a little bit more information, the charging rebate is offered to customers who agree to shift and maintain 
their EV charging activities exclusively to the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., Monday through Friday. Um, customers may also charge at any time on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and I'm going to pause and say I wish I, I have electric through SPL, and they do not offer these programs, which I wish they did. So good job, JEA. Um, this will reduce the impact of the charging at, at peak times and help improve our load factor. So the original intent was to offer customers a bill credit. Uh, which seemed plausible, um, but due to the delays, again, of the C2M project, we'll not be able to offer that uh, bill credit to the customers. So Stagewell will implement, um, and there's some details about how that will happen in the write-up, but I will pause there, and I will pass it to the business to see if they want to highlight anything else on this award before we ask for questions. Or Nathan. Hi, hi. Or well, this is Tony. I was trying to start my video. I apologize for the delay in coming on. That's okay. um, Jenny, I, I really feel that you've summarized it very well in this case. Um, just kind of add that we, as we were evaluating um, the proposals, we, we knew Sagewell had obviously um, put bill credits in their proposal originally. And we, when we reached out, it looked like uh, given the timelines with C2M migration that this was a, a plausible scenario where we would be able to establish some bill credits to customers. So uh, we made the decision not too long ago that given the delays that uh, and the need to put bring your own charger on the street, um, that we uh, need to get this change order and have Sagewell actually do the implementation. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. Any questions or comments from the awards committee? So. Jenny, the reason we're bringing this item to the awards committee is to change order, kick it over the $300,000 limit. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions? All right. I'll ask for a motion to approve award number six. Hi, Boo. So moved. Sure, final second. Thank you. We'll roll call through the committee to approve award number six, starting with Haibu. Approved. Joe Arfano. Approved. Stephen Datz. Approved. Ricky Erickson. Approved. And Laura Dutton. Approved. Thank you. We have uh, reviewed all of the award items on the agenda for August 12th, 2021, and they have all been approved. Do we have any other business to come before the awards committee? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned. We will see you guys next week. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great